Um, so the first, our first order of business tonight is to get a presentation and discussion of Article 25, Concord Public Schools, uh, Fiscal 21 budget. And for that, I believe we're going to turn the, who do we, who, how would you like to proceed on this um, uh, court? Johnny? Would you like to, uh, you're muted, court. Yeah, unmute, there we go. So okay. thank you for uh, uh, hosting uh, the meeting and bringing us before you tonight. Uh, uh, Wally Johnston, chair of the regional school committee, uh, myself, uh, vice chair of the Concord Public Schools School Committee. Uh, we'll leave it uh, in the capable hands of uh, Jared Stanton and uh, Lori Hunter, which is exactly what you anticipated. <laughs> Uh, and we have we have heard uh, a similar presentation earlier this evening, uh, and uh, so I, I think you'll be uh, be pleased with the clarity that uh, is going to uh, uh, come about tonight with with the numbers. Thank you, Court. Uh, Dr. Hunter, take it away. Great, thank you. So, Jared, I'm hoping can screen share. Yeah. We're going to give you a opening view of what we've done over the last two months really um, to rebuild our rebuild our budgets and I think it's important to just talk through a high level of all the very many many variables that are happening for us as to how we got here um, so we are proposing for Concord public schools and have a voted budget from the school committee last week of forty million uh, seven hundred and seven seven hundred thousand seventy seven one ninety three i'm sorry i've been in this zoom chair since eight o'clock this morning <laughs> so i'm gonna try to keep going here so okay. jared if you'll mind yeah uh so uh, 40 million seven hundred seventy seven thousand one hundred ninety three um is the new proposed budget so this is a, just so you know, this is a scaled down version of the presentation that you saw before, um, but we probably recognize all of the stuff that uh, on this slide, uh, we took the same process that we did back in the fall um, and we reviewed every single line. Uh, we met with all the principals um, and we looked at all the salaries. We looked at every possible thing we could possibly look at to come up and and improve these budgets. Uh, it was a true team effort, um, and um, it was it was done uh, quickly. So instead of breaking down the budget drivers by DESI function, I broke them down into 35 expense types. Some of these expense types include contract services, equipment, legal, longevity. Um, stipends, maintenance, memberships, overtime, PD, in approximately 15 salary categories. The current increase over FY20's budget is $1,387,030, or 3.52%, and have identified 2,090,110 in budget drivers. The first is a small amount, 25 in contingency, which brings our total contingency to 150000 in this revised budget. We hired a special education chair after the FY20 budget was formed, and here is that budget uh, expense in here. We hired three assistant principals for our elementary schools after last year's budget cycle. They make up the bulk of, the bulk of this estimate. All three assistant principals were hired within, and their positions were not backfilled, which is the reason why the next line, teacher salary, is only increasing 1.33%. If you include the monies that were transferred to the principal's line, teacher salaries would be up 705000 The budgeted tutor FTE increase in FY21 over FY20 is 10. We did not hire 10 additional tutors in FY21. Instead, we originally budgeted to reduce tutors in the FY21 old budget, but we now need to retain them since our needs have changed. We also did have some student services that were needed uh, and required um, for one-to-one -one tutors uh, before the pandemic. Those one-to-ones help keep those kids from going out of this uh, going out of district, but they would now be a fixed cost. Up until a few years ago, most of the middle school student activities were funded by parents by the parents association. Now they are funded partially through a revolving account balance that is dwindling and is now part of the 
general fund. Due to the need for more remote and hybrid learning, the district needed to purchase more online software and just about every subject. Between April and June, many of these softwares were free to the district as a trial and will now be a fixed cost. Some of these costs could be charged to the COVID-19 grant, um, so that is good. The special education tuitions are misleading. Uh, I explained this uh, in, the, in the winter budget cycle as part of the FY20 budget cycle, which was in December of 2018. We had a very healthy circuit breaker revolving account balance. And to build the FY20 budget, we increased our general fund circuit breaker offset by 150000 more than we were expected expect to get to ease the tuition costs. This past winter, we did not have any circuit breaker rollover and the additional 150K was not available to offset. The situation has now changed and I expect to have over 600,000 in our circuit breaker revolving account. This was not applied to this budget. <clears throat> so overall tuition costs are down, uh, which will decrease our circuit breaker reimbursement for FY21, uh, which was already accounted for in this budget. Um, and this gives us a real cost of what the special education tuitions are at, the, at this time. Uh, before you move off that slide, Jared, could I ask one question? Yes. Um, and that is, you have a you have a a, a small a small font uh, thing saying that seven hundred and five thousand and one hundred and one hundred dollars, which is a three point one zero percent increase if you add the assistant principal salaries. It, do, it does not appear that that also adds that team chair. Is that team chair considered a a, a teaching position or what? What is the yes? Is that it is a non-union administrative position? It's an administrative position, so it doesn't. It does not. It's not in the teaching uh, category of the unionized teaching roles. Correct. And yep. if if a person becomes administrative within the school, they become an assistant principal. Are they then no longer part of the union, or how does that how does that group work? That is correct. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, thanks. Um, so then we have um, tutors. Um, sorry, um, it's been a long day on Zoom for me as well. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, tutors, uh, you see a large increase. Uh, we we did um, we budgeted uh, the budget of tutor FTE increase in FY21 over FY20 is 10. We did not hire 10 uh, additional tutors in F. Oh, I already I already sorry. Can you the slide? Excuse me. The, I want to, the slide needs to be advanced. I think that is right. Uh, There we go. You're right. There we go. Okay. Sorry. So utilities quite unpredictable. Um, these are more in line with FY19 actuals. Uh, I did include them as a budget driver because uh, they are an increase of ninety four thousand. And then we have uh, two bus uh, two buses that we are replacing next year to stay on our cycle. So again, we identified two million ninety thousand one hundred ten thousand in budget drivers. To offset these budget drivers, we identified 617,000 in cost savings. And here are some of the cost savings. Uh, most of that came from special ed and maintenance. Uh, we did have um, some increases such as in special ed, um, uh, special ed uh, transportation, as well as district-wide toner contract uh, that is saving us money uh, district-wide, but it is now uh, in its own line. Uh, we reduced equipment throughout the district as well as field trips. We left a little in there for virtual. Uh, professional development, as Dr. Hunter said, um, we reduced the, the professional development lines and we're doing more within. Um, the salary aids has decreased, more of just a, uh, the way that we're budgeting them. Uh, same with the clerical staff. Uh, as well as the non-union. Uh, in substitutes, we reduced all of our in-house substitute lines and we kept um, ones for long-term subs. So this is a level service budget. Uh, the increase is 3.52% or 1,392,711.
And again, the new budget is 40 million seven hundred and seventy seven thousand one hundred and ninety three. And that is Article 25. Chris, you had a question. Can we go back to a uh, full view? Um, um, if we stop sharing, we can see everybody's hands. Any questions from the Finance Committee on Article 25? Chris. Yeah, I had a question, um, Jared. Um, the in the uh, sped spending, um, there's a reduction of about two hundred and eight thousand related to externally contracted services. Is that different from tuition? Correct. Um, so every single budget location, such as the elementary, all three elementary schools, as well as the middle school, they all have contract services. We have a new special ed director. This is her first budget. She did a zero base of these. Um, and we revised the way that we've done things, and we were able to reduce our contract to services by that amount. So are those people that you, are these individuals that you hire, or is it, uh, what what would the service be? And Laura, you can jump in, but these sure. are, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so it, it's a range. It depends on the student's needs. Sometimes in the past, we've had behavioral consultants come in. Now we have our own suite, um, Department of BCBAs. Um, so a lot of it was outs outsourced might be a word you're more familiar with, where now we've built a lot more in-house capacity. Um, this, the combination of the, in the intensive programs, but also the people that run those programs come with a lot of uh, skill set that we can then have benefit other kids as well. So we've just been able to do more in-house is really the easy way to say it. Okay. Uh, and that's been, that's great in so many ways. Okay, great. Um, Jared, I just, I'm just going to go back because my head gets kind of twisted um, on the uh, circuit breaker for CPS. So you coming into uh, FY20, you had assumed you would be kind of, you wouldn't have any circuit breaker carry forward. You ended up though with a large balance because of reduced spending, I assume. So uh, how does that feed into the change that I see in the budget. I'm just trying to connect the dots as I work through, and I know it's complicated, so. Sure, so going back to December, 2018, which is uh, FY19. Right. We had uh, near the max of the carryover that we were allowed for circuit breaker. So what we did at that time is we took 150,000 more mm -hmm. than we anticipated to get from the state because we thought that we would have carryover and we would re reduce tuitions by $150,000 more than we were expected to get. When we closed the year, we used some of that money to redo the way that we, uh, the big special ed redo last summer, uh, which uh, is a result of tuitions being down, uh, contract services being down, but we had to use some of that circuit breaker money to offset more tuitions during the year to free up some cash. When I did the FY21 budget this past December, I did not anticipate having a single dollar left over in the circuit breaker account. Uh, that has since changed. Um, right. And now I anticipate to have that $600,000. And what that is, is that's a, a contingency for special ed. Uh, I could probably have up to over a million dollars in there, which is what we used to carry. That's something that I want to get back there especially for CPS when we don't have the reserves that we are entitled to at the high school. Right. So you only have 150 in, at CPS. So the, uh, um, so by not taking the 600,000 into the FY21 budget, that's sort of like a, a contingency. Is that the way to think about well, it? Yes. And yes. So we're going to have that 600,000, but the reason why it showed up as a budget driver yeah. is because we didn't have that additional $150,000 of an offset. So it made it look like tuitions are increasing when they're not. We just okay. used, I, I got kind of caught, um, but it, it was a good gamble at the time. Okay. Okay. I think I understand it. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Anyone else with questions on Article 25? Sorry, can I just ask a quick question? I must not understand what the definition of level service is. 
because I look at your charts and I hear about three new assistant principals and new positions and new buses, and then I see a conclusion of level service. So could someone define level service for me, please? Sure. So uh, the three assistant principals were reallocating curriculum specialist positions we already had. So we actually didn't add people to create those positions. We just re redrafted what their roles were going to be. Um, I, I suppose you could argue that, you know, for a team chair to be added, we didn't add service to students. What we did add was a much stronger layer of leadership to the special education provisions so that we're on a, in a much tighter place in terms of monitoring and providing for kids, which is why the out of district numbers are strengthening and the contracted service numbers are going down and some of the um, pieces of that. So in, in my previous world, and John, you make a good point, every district I've been in level service means slightly different things. Um, to me, that means we didn't add another big program. We didn't have a need for a big enrollment jump to figure out. We didn't have all these major shifts in, in Concord history. We didn't have Spanish, for example. We didn't have a late start time change. You know, some of those really big initiatives, there is none of that in this budget, um, unless you consider just pandemic responsiveness part of that. But what we tried to do was reallocate so that we were not just adding on and adding on even to manage that. So that makes sense. Thank you for that. I guess yeah. when, you, when you make decisions that cost more, that's where I have trouble conceptually with the definition of uh, the conclusion of a level service. Yeah, and I, I see level service in terms of what we're providing to students. So it's good you asked that because clarifying that is definitely important because that doesn't mean there wasn't some cost to you know, remanaging or reorganizing or serving them better. Thank you. Anyone else with questions on Article 25? Mary. I've got a quick question. Um, as far as the $225 per student that you've got, I know that's separate from your budget, right? It's Correct. not embedded in either the, okay. Can you just remind me again what that number is? Uh, so at the CPS, it's just under 468,000. Okay, great, thank you. And 297 at the high school. Any other questions? I I see in the Q and A block we have uh, a few we have a few people who'd like to ask a question. So um, so one of the, so uh, I guess Chris, could you promote Brian Folds who has a a question? Um, Hi, uh, Brian Folds, 33 Riverdale Road. Um, I was wondering about when they were talking about the HVAC systems, um, they said the elementary schools did well. Um, I'm wondering, could you give me more information about how the elementary schools did, um, which ones needed more or less work? I know the high school, the, the middle, the PPD and Sanborn locations needed a lot, that makes sense. Um, but I, I wasn't able to get the information before. Sure. So, and we're going to post all the report that he's put together. It'll be very detailed. Um, Willard, uh, extraordinary is pretty much the word he's used. It's state of the art, and he's only seen systems like that. I think he just said to the school committee at Ivy League schools and very elite places, it's well beyond what he normally sees in an elementary school. Um, Alcott and Thoreau are doing just fine. We didn't need to do any remediation. Everything is functional and working. Um, the flows and ventilations are adequate. We're in good shape there. So that really, we can give you more detail as we share the slides, but things are things are good there. They're not Willard. Uh, yeah. None of the buildings well, were Willard. <laughs> so. Well, it, it's great to hear Willard was doing so well because it did get the LEED Gold certification when it was built. And that was the green certification that focused on indoor air quality. So I'm glad, given the pandemic, that it, it's performed as expected. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. We have one more uh, audience member who would like to speak. Sorry, is that Pamela Tripp? Yeah, Pamela Tripp, sorry, yep. 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 Hi, 
I was just wondering if the new, if the two additional school buses are electric, as we should not be making any more infrastructure investments in fossil fuel. As part of our uh, ten-year cycle, these ones are not uh, electric. Um, Did that come through? Oh, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Did I ask my question? Yes, you, you did. did. Okay. So these are you not, answer it again, Jared? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so these ones are not uh, the, the price differential um, is something that the general fund um, could not afford. Um, so these are diesel buses. We are why, getting. Why, why can we not hold off on buying them until we can afford? Uh, right now, the we have um, we have buses that are in jeopardy of failing uh, inspection. Um, and we need to get them replaced so we can get the kids to school. Uh, the electric bus, not only the price, but the lead time on getting them um, is anywhere from nine to 12 months, potentially. Why should we not be doing that right now? So I'll, I'll answer that if that's okay. Um, we're working really- Jared answered the question primarily. It's primarily cost. I mean, that's, that's absolutely, uh, it's absolutely inhibitive prohibitive. I thought there were programs to support schools to do that, that we could surely qualify for. We will, we will be hearing for that at the end of this hearing this evening. Article 30 addresses that, and we will hear more about that. Thank you.